In this video, I want to discuss the relationship between entropy and degeneracy. So this has to do with the conformational entropy. And so I, in this video, I want to start with a question. So here I have uh, two systems. I have a receptor molecule, a big molecule, that can bind an A molecule like this or a B molecule like this. And if I mix one mole of this molecule, the R molecule, one mole of A molecules, and one mole of B molecules, what do I get? And when you think about this, you should ignore translation, rotation, and vibrational contributions to the entropy, and therefore the, the free energy. The last thing you should know is that the bond enthalpy, so the strength with which this molecule binds the receptor, is the same as the strength with which this molecule binds the receptor. So, if I mix one mole of R, A, and B, what do I get? Click on pause, think about it, and when you're, when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? Okay, so the correct answer is A. So you'll get more of the A molecule binding to the receptor than the B molecule. The reason for that is that the, B the A molecule can bind in four different ways. So the receptor A molecule complex has a degeneracy of four. Okay. So the conformational entropy of this complex is higher than this complex because the conformational entropy is given by R times the natural log of the degeneracy. So the number of conformations with the same energy, right, which is four in this case, and only one in this case. So the conformational entropy is higher, and if that is the only thing that determines, that contributes to the entropy, then this will have a higher entropy, and therefore a lower free energy. If these don't bind exactly with exactly the same enthalpy, then the, the equation for the conformational entropy is this, uh, given here. So Fi is the fraction of molecules in conformation I. So F4 is the fraction of molecules in this conformation. If they all have the same energy, then the fraction will be 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. And if you plug that in here, you'll get this equation. If the fractions are something other than 1 fourth, then you can show that the conformational entropy will be lower than this value. And as they become closer and closer to 1 fourth, then they'll approach uh, this value. Okay, so the general equation for the entropy is this, where this is the multiplicity. If all states have the same energy, then the multiplicity can be written in terms of the degeneracy like this. This is for one mole, so this is Avogadro's number. And you can rewrite this equation like this. So that's where it's coming from. So if all the states don't have exactly the same energy, then you can use this equation to approximate um, how many states have roughly the same energy. Okay, so for delta S, then that is the ratio of the degeneracy in the product divided by the degeneracy of the reactant. And so you can estimate that from this equation here. So, uh, if we look at the water dimer, so the hydrogen bond between two water molecules, here we have the different contributions to the entropy, the conformation, translation, rotation, and vibration. So if the change in conformational entropy is given by this number, what is the ratio of the conformational degeneracy 
of the product compared to the reactant where you have a hydrogen bond. Okay, so here are your four answers. Press pause, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? Okay, so it's one eighth. So if you take the conformational entropy, which is minus 17.2, and plug it into this formula, you get one eighth. All right, so that means that the conformational degeneracy is of the reactants is eight times larger than the product. Uh, and so you can actually see that here. So here uh, are the eight different ways you can write the reactant. Right? So the reactant is the hydrogen bonded water dimer. Right? And that can be written this way, but you can also switch these two. So in this way, so you can form this from two water molecules in eight different ways, as you can see here. Okay, and so that's why the conformational entropy of the water dimer is higher than the conformational entropy of two separate water molecules. Okay, you can then apply the same reasoning to the other terms in, that contribute to the standard free energy change. So for example, the change in translational entropy is quite large, right? And so that means that there are uh, 10 million more ways of arranging two separated water molecules in a standard volume compared to the two being together. And so you can try, you can in general understand this principle from this simple uh, schematic, right? Where you have a very small volume, and already for this very small volume, right, there's 15 ways of generating separated uh, molecules compared to six ways of generating the molecules together. So here the ratio is about two, right? But as the volume uh, of an ideal gas at room temperature, right, that's very large compared to the size of the molecules, then the difference in degeneracy is much, much larger. Right? For rotation, this value, it's smaller, but again, you still favor the products, the two separated water molecules, right, they will rotate more. If you have two particles rotating compared to the reactants, where you have one particle rotating, and finally, for the vibrations, right, that's negative, so that favors, it says there's more vibrational entropy in the reactants, in the water dimer, right? And that makes sense, too, because if you just count the number of vibrations, right, each water molecule, free water molecule, has three vibrations, and you have two of those, so that's six vibrations. But this water dimer molecule, right, has six atoms, and so it has 3 times 6 minus 6 vibrations, which is 12. Right? So yes, there's more ways to vibrate or to distribute the vibrational energy for the more complex molecule.